Who is going to start for Texas A&M on the offensive line this season? You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to have the conversation. Who is going to start for Texas A&M on the offensive line this? season got a fun show today we've got a lot of great quotes from the coaching staff and it's funny you know i keep saying hey we're almost there we're almost to the season right these conversations that we're hearing from the coaching staff are the season's 24 whatever days away right that those are the conversations were happening now which is very exciting um so we'll get into some of that talk about why this team needs to stay healthy We'll get into all that here in a little bit later on the show, but I want to start talking a little bit about this offensive line. If you're an everyday or here at Locked on Aggies, you know that how important, obviously, I think offensive line is. And I don't even think that's a, it's not a personal opinion. I think that's just a football fact. But you also know that I have my concerns about this offensive line. And when I say concerns, I think that it, it's hard to call them concerns. I, I think the better term would be uh, questions, you know, and we need to see those questions answered. So you've got talented players. I think I get concerned about this offensive line or I have my questions. And then I write down the names that I anticipate starting and I go, this this unit could be pretty good. Um, obviously, these players are going to have to play up to their potential. But I think that the coaching staff has improved where that won't be a- as challenging as it was under the previous offensive line, you know, coach and previous coaching staff in general. So, I mean, the one, the, to me, there are two spots that are locked down on this offensive line. I think one is left tackle. I feel pretty, pretty confident that. Trey Zune's the guy. I don't. I mean, I don't feel pretty confident. I, I guarantee you know he, he's the guy. He's your captain. He, he represents you at SEC Media Days. He's he's the guy at left tackle. I think that Chase Besant is playing one of the guard positions. I've heard right guard. Um, I I don't think I've seen, if y'all have seen that. I haven't seen a definite answer there, but I know he's going to start at one of the guards. I'm pretty sure right guard. Um, so. Those are the two spots. So basically, one of the two guards, you're going to see Chase Besson to start, and that's a fact. I think I've seen, like I said, it right, but let me know if y'all have seen anything different. Um, that leaves the other guard spot center and then your right tackle spot. And I'll tell you, I, for a while, talked about my thoughts about who's going to start at center. Bryce Foster's gone. Bryce Foster is no longer a um, an option, obviously, on this team. He has moved on. And we heard from Coach Elko a few well, – last week, I think it was, saying the guys that are the options at center are Mark Naboo and then, of course, Kali from Utah and then Dewberry. Those are your guys. Those are your options at center. I think for a while, y'all knew my opinion – I, I thought that Kali would end up starting at center and then Naboo would play that other guard spot. But I think of that group, my I think the best offensive lineman is Mark Naboo. So the other guy that I think you can't not have on the field is Armage Reed Adams. Now, my thought on that was when I thought there was still a chance that Chase Besantis would stay at tackle, you know, Coach Elko put that to bed. He said, listen, Chase Besantis is playing guard for us. He's he's going to be our guard. He hasn't even been out there. He's playing guard. You know, because my thought was, okay, you could have Besantis at right tackle, Zune at left. You could have Armage Reed Adams at left guard, Mark Naboo at right guard, and then Collie at center. 
I think that knowing that Basantis is going to play guard and that's a done deal, the coaching staff has locked in on that decision, and I think it's a fine decision. I think that means that Ruben Fathry plays your right tackle spot. I think Mark Naboo wins the job at center, and I think Armaj Rita Adams plays left guard. That leaves you with some really solid options on the bench. Of course, Collie, who we just got done talking about. Dewberry, who we talked about. Demetrius Crownover as well. You know, another tackle option there. And then you've got some of the other guys. Your Shanahan's. Your, um, uh, you know, that you have a lot of other options. You have the young guys that are on this roster. You got, um, you got Funk. You got that's just fun to say. You got Funk, but um, you know, you've got some of the young guys on this roster as well. This is a deep offensive line room. You go from experienced to inexperienced very quickly, but I still do believe that this is. I believe this is an offensive line that it's a it's it's a concern, a question, whichever you want to call it. But I think at the end of the day, and I've said I don't think that the upside of this offensive line is through the roof. I think that this offensive line has a ceiling of pretty good. I don't think they have a ceiling of elite. I would there was nothing in the world I would prefer than to be wrong about that take. I would absolutely love to be wrong about that. But I still do look at this and kind of think, okay, that probably is the ceiling of this offensive line. It's pretty good. But I've also said, as you every day as you're locked on Aggies know, if Texas A&M can have a pretty good offensive line, if you told me right now, you said, here, Andrew, Texas A&M is going to have a pretty good offensive line, I would take that in a heartbeat. I wouldn't think twice about it because I think pretty good. Let's say pretty good means you have the eighth best offensive line in the SEC, right? I'd take that right now because we know you have great options at running back. You have an elite quarterback. You have an elite set of wide receivers. You have an elite set of tight ends. I feel great about every skill position on this football team. My only worry about offense is the offensive line. And if they're good, this offense is going to be absolutely dominant with who you have Colin plays and coach Colin Klein. So they don't need to be the best offensive line in the SEC. Would that be awesome? Of course it would be awesome. We'd all take that. But I, I don't see that happening. There's some really solid offensive lines in this conference this season. So I don't see... I don't see that happening. I don't see this unit turning into the you know a top three unit in the SEC. I would say their ceiling would be like the number five offensive line in the SEC. And if that happens, you are excited about it. But I think you're going to see this offensive line fall somewhere in that seven, eight, or nine range. And I think you take that because I think that's going to get the job done. They're not going to get dominated all game long. They're maybe not going to be elite, but they're not going to be bad. You don't want them to be bad. Uh, Coach Oko did talk about potentially – having some different options, you know, or, or, excuse me, potentially moving some guys in and out throughout the game. You you don't see that a, a ton. I don't, I mean, a ton. You don't see that where, okay, we're going to put in a new left guard and a new right guard for this possession, whatever it is. I mean, you just don't, you don't see that a lot. So it'd be interesting to see if they do that. Does that lead to some playing time for Kali or for a crown over or for a uh, Dewberry or for, uh, Shanahan, I mean, like, what what does that mean? What does that lead to? And that's going to be interesting. Do that? Is that one of those things that? Hey, it was an idea in um in when they were watching video the other day, when they were watching tape the other day, was that just kind of an idea? Like, hey, maybe we could do this, and that never actually happens potentially. But um, it will be interesting to see. Does that end up becoming a reality? I don't know if I'm buying it, but you never know. I mean, you just, you never know. So it'll be interesting to see um, what this offensive line does. But once again, if you listen to this show every single day, you know that this offensive line, in my opinion, is going to make or break this season for the Aggies. If they're great, or if they're really good to great, this Texas A&M offensive line is going to, I mean, this Texas A&M offense is going to be really good. If they're bad, that's when it's going to begin to get hard for Texas A&M to score points. So you need this offensive line to be good. You need them to be good. And if they're good with how great we know this defense is going to be, 
Texas A&M can be an all-around great football team, and that is how you reach your uh, you hit your ceiling when it comes to wins. We heard a lot from Coach Bateman and Coach Elko about some of these defensive transfers and some guys that might play more significant roles than we imagined. We're going to talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I got to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. I know. You're sitting here thinking it. You all are so excited to hear me talk about Game Time because you all know I love talking about Game Time. I do. I love this app. I think it is the best, in, in all honesty, the only place anyone should ever purchase a ticket to any event, whether it's a ball game, you know, football, baseball, basketball, whatever. Whether it's a concert, you're going to see a comedian, whether you're going to the theater, whatever it is, if you can buy a ticket to it, you need to be buying that ticket on Game Time. I love the Game Time app. I love how easy it is to see your seat, where you're going to be sitting. I think that's a great feature. I, I, I basically sometimes decide where I'm going to sit, what ticket I'm going to buy based on that from the Game Time app. So I recommend checking that out. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So now moving on to this conversation that we're about to have about some of the defensive transfers. So we're going to run through a lot of quotes from the coaching staff. But the first thing that I want to talk about is what these coaches had to say about the transfers on defense. So first thing we have here is Coach Bateman had this to say. He started talking about Albert Regis, which obviously not a part of this conversation, but we're still going to read it anyway. Albert Regis is tremendous. He has put in the work in the weight room. And he is a tough-minded kid. Now here's where we get interesting to our conversation. Rodas Johnson has pass rush skills. Josh Salazar is another big body playing some in and some outside. Two transfers there and Johnson and Salazar. Um, two guys, I loved Rodas Johnson's versatility when it comes to he can play all over the defensive line. And hey, it sounds like Josh Salazar is doing the same thing. He's another guy who can play all over the defensive line. There is nothing I love more than versatility on the football field. I love it when a guy can play multiple positions. Nothing makes me happier. And both of these guys can do that. That's great to hear. Are they going to be starters? Probably not, but they're going to give you that much needed depth on the defensive line. And defensive line depth is so huge. It's so important. You need to have lots of guys and the veterans. And that's what also helps. These guys are going to be able to come in for some of your really elite, talented guys, and they're going to give you some solid snaps. So you love to see that. Then the line, this is Coach Bateman on linebacker transfer Solomon to Shields. He wasn't there. He wasn't here in spring. Every day he is gaining ground. He is a good addition for sure. You know, whether he starts, whether he comes off the bench, whether he's a depth piece, He's such a huge addition for this football team. Heading into that that portal window, y'all know, hey, the Aggies desperately, desperately need another linebacker. So I think the Shields was the perfect addition because here's the deal. If he doesn't start, that means that somebody took over for him. You know, somebody or, or somebody just took over and was great because I could see the Shields starting right now. If he doesn't start, that means that someone beat him out for that job, and I think he's a really good player. So if somebody beats him out for that spot, you know they're playing really good football as well. So that is absolutely great to hear there. Um, and then here is a little conversation about some about uh, Cassius Howell. Coach Bateman said, Cassius Howell is going to play a ton on the D-line. You rotate the most. He's a unique and good player. The 12th man is going to be really happy with him. This conversation's a little, a little bit has to do with what we just got done talking about um, with the transfers. So we'll, we'll read this quote here from Coach Bateman. Um, this is him talking about the secondary competition. 
So he said, it's really cool. Jordan Peterson is doing a, a good job with the corners. It's a really competitive room. I don't think there is anyone who thinks there are two starters right now. I think they will all play. So, hey, you're going to have a lot of guys mixing in and out, a lot of guys playing um, a lot of a lot of snaps. Now, here's Coach Oko continuing that conversation on um, Solomon DeShields and then the linebackers in general. Coach Oko said, Solomon DeShields is the wild card. He is starting to get comfortable. He made a lot of plays last night. It started to click system-wise. That's great to hear because, once again, like I said, whether he is – starter whether he's a depth piece he's a veteran who's played a lot of college football and he's going to help this football team so now some more quotes from coach elko here's coach elko talking about the secondary i think we have enough versatility there we got to see more of des ricks and terry bussey you know ricks was a little banged up in the early um in the last window and now you know you of course didn't get to see bussey because he wasn't on campus yet now you're really getting to see both of those guys and i think they're going to be involved in this uh, competition Coach Elko had this to say about the GOAT of Locked on Aggies, and that is Donovan Green. He said, in the ability to set the edge in the run game, it's important. This is big boy football. His weight gain will help with that. It's been good to, to see him get better. He is such a great kid and a hard worker. The growth and development you see in practice is like a young kid getting back into it. You know, obviously, Donovan Green is coming off that injury. and He's got to get himself healthy. Um, but you know, it sounds like he's put on some weight and and that in a good in, you know put on some muscle, and that's going to help him stay healthy. That's going to help him be able to block better. That that's huge for him. I'm really excited about that. Um, Coach Bateman had this to say about Shamar Stewart. He said, "I told the scout if you gave me, um, if you gave me and you two hours in a lab creating a player, it would look like Shamar Stewart. I think you will see a pro. You will see a problem if I am an OC. I want." to know where that guy is. I think he's going to have a great year. No surprise here. We all know that. Coach Bateman says he's going to be in the press box during games. I don't know if that's something that bothers you all. It doesn't really it doesn't really bother me. You know what I mean? Like if that's something that's like you want the coaches on the sidelines, you want the coaches in the um um in the press box, let, let me know that in the YouTube comments. Like do y'all have a does that bother y'all? Um, does that in any way like concern y'all for the season? I'm really curious to hear y'all's thoughts on that conversation. Um, so let me know that in the YouTube comments. We've got a few more quotes to run through, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit about the quarterback room, a little bit about Noah Thomas and what he's done. We're going to run through that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. So continuing our conversation about the quotes from Coach Klein, Coach Bateman, and, of course, Coach Elko, uh, the next thing we got here is from Coach Bateman about Taryn York. He said, he is a testament to what hard work produces. He is, he is eaten up with becoming the best football player he can be. He has changed his body, but the amount of time he puts in and the single-minded focus with the football, it's rare and it's elite. I mean, anytime I hear anybody talk about Taryn York, it's something positive. I mean, it's almost boring talking about him as a football player because, A, he's a great football player, but who he is as a young man, like I said, I mean, Terry York, I'm serious, he very well could be the president. He is a great person. He's a great person to represent this school. He's a great person to represent this football program. Um, and, you know, he, we're, we're lucky to have him as an Aggie because he, he's just a great young man. And, and it's great to hear, and he's going to be an incredible player on the field. And I think an incredible player in the NFL. Um, so this is Coach Klein talking about the run game. He says, each team takes on its own identity as far as what you do schematically. I believe that running the ball is a team effort. Everyone looks at the offensive line, but it's tight ends, receivers, and packaging things too. You know, obviously Coach Klein is great when it comes to the run game. He's got a great system. I really like um, the way he he puts an effort to make sure his football teams are going to be able to run the ball because it's it's very important. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see how that all works itself out. Then we've got Coach Klein. Um, this is interesting talking about the helmet communication. Obviously, you know, you'll be able to talk in there. He says, "I think it's a, a great thing 
It's good for the game and a good teaching tool. I like that. I think it's going to be fun for the college game. I really do. I think it's an all-around good idea. I think it's a good thing to bring to the college game. You know, something they've had in the pros for a while. Bring it down to the college game. I like it. I'm excited to see what that kind of looks like. Here's Coach Klein on the wide receiver. She says, we have some really good weapons. We can be aggressive mentally. It's continuing to work on the mentality of how we play. Coach Elko does a good, jo a good job. He, Coach Elko does as good of a job as anyone of setting the stage and teaching situational football. Um, Y'all know that I have my questions about the receiver room. Someone's got to step up. Someone's got to be the guy. So anytime I hear Coach Klein, Coach Elko, any of these coaches say something positive about these wide receivers, it does get me a little, little bit more pumped up for that room. Here's Coach Klein talking about the running backs. He said, it's a very complete room. I think we're going to be able to use all of them very cohesively. All have good ball skills, are physical, and run hard at the point of attack. I love um, I love how they are competing. Coach Trooper calls it a stable for a reason. Really excited about that group. I mean, no kidding. That's the group we've talked about a ton here on the show. They're going to be dominant. They're going to be really, really good. You're not going to see Texas A&M struggle running the football, and you've got that much needed depth. You have those. You have multiple players who can step in, which is really great to see. That is important, I think, in a running back room, is to have lots of guys because it's a room where you know you're getting hit hard a lot, and you're going to see injuries happen. Knowing you got four guys who can come in and play legit snaps it is going to be huge for this uh, Texas A&M running back room, and that really does get me excited. Here's Coach Klein talking about Noah Thomas. He says, Noah Thomas has done a tremendous job. He is a fierce competitor. He studies the game, and it allows us a lot of flexibility. We will be able to move him all over the field. He'll be a big-time player for us for sure. Once again, I've kind of gotten on the Noah Thomas hype train that he could be the guy that takes over as this number one guy in the wide receiver room. Um, he's going to be really good. He's going to be really good. At that height, it's hard not to look at him and go, can he turn into what Mike Evans was um, at AM, maybe even in the pros? You know, I think Noah Thomas is a guy that if he has his breakout year and he's able to stay healthy, he's going to turn into an NFL wide receiver. And then we've got Coach Klein talking about the quarterback room. He says, I think we are at we are striving for consistency collectively at that position. Consistency is key. I love the group. Every single one of them is working hard and making progress five days into camp. Good to see. Obviously, you know who the starter is going to be in that room. But once again, we know what has happened over the last few years at Texas a and when it comes to keeping quarterbacks healthy. So knowing that the room as a whole is learning this system well and the room as a whole is getting better and, and, and all those things, it's really, really good to hear because you never know when someone's going to get banged up and you just flat out need someone else to come in and compete. We're going to hold this conversation about um, the injuries. And, and um, I want to talk about, you know, obviously Texas lost an important player. We talked about the Notre Dame injury yesterday. We're, we'll talk about that in segment three of Friday's show. I really want to break down why the key for right now is making sure we, we keep players on the field. So we'll have that conversation at the tail end of tomorrow's show. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. Really, really appreciate it. The season is almost here. It's right around the corner. I'm excited. I know y'all are excited. Um, hit that subscribe button. We just hit 2,000 subscribers. And so I really appreciate y'all. Um, uh, keep growing this thing. I appreciate y'all being here every day. Um, it will keep growing once we get back into football season, of course, as well. But thank y'all every day or people that comment every day. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all being here. Really does mean the world to me. Hope everyone has a great rest of their day today, and we will see y'all tomorrow right here at Locked on Aggies.